I think there's a million opportunities, especially in the day day and age of the internet, where your value is is determined by your skills. And you're when you've taken out geographic barriers, we've taken out a lot. You can make it um, as as you know being your own boss. Yeah. I think to be an entrepreneur and start a business, um, like, like I said before, I'm, there's definitely many people that have disrupted this pattern, but I think it's like pretty core to your DNA. Mm. Um, you know, uh, it, it's something that ever since I was a kid, I, I could never turn off my mind. How, what's what's a different way to think about this problem? What's a different way? And, you know, now I, you know, I, I work on .cal full time, but that's that doesn't show the graveyard of, of 15 companies and, and side hustles and various things. Um, that have started in the past. And it's just, it's kind of a part of my brain that it's kind of exhausting. I can't always turn it off. Hey, this is a quick shout out from one of our awesome sponsors. Check this out. Hey guys, this episode is sponsored by Tranquil Turtle Massage. Tracy over there, the founder, she's a small town girl from Montana, loves God, loves her family, loves her friends, loves working out, fishing and camping. She has a passion for helping those in need and enjoys being creative with woodworking, crocheting, healthy baking, pottery and cooking. Look, she began her massage journey back in 2010 where she graduated from massage school up in Anchorage, Alaska. She specializes in her signature massages, the Hanu Infusion and the Hanu Ashiatsu, as well as the Gua Sha and Manual Lymphatic Drainage. If you're looking for a massage specialist and someone who could get you feeling good, go see Tracy down at Tranquil Turtle Massage. And while you're there, check out CDA Microblading, offering Coeur d'Alene's best tattoo brows, plasma fibroblast, tightening, and PMU services right there in the heart of downtown Coeur d'Alene. Make sure you book your appointment at pnwmobilemassage.com. Hey, Rylan, you're the head of product and co-founder of DotCal. So much more, man. Entrepreneur, speaker. Thank you so much for your time, man. I appreciate it. Thank you, man. I'm happy to happy to be here, uh, dude. I love to kick things off a bit by going back. Like, where did you grow up? What's childhood like for you? Yeah, I have kind of a unique childhood uh, genesis story. Um, so I actually grew up on an alpaca farm at the top of a mountain. Come um, on. <laughs> so yeah, it, it was top of a ski mountain, and we had fifty alpacas, and it was a pretty idyllic childhood. We were in you know, a dirt road, no neighbors for 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 miles. Um, and, you know, taught me a lot about, you know, work ethic, working on a farm. I, it, I ended up in software because I, I didn't have a cutout to be a, you know, a farmer. Yeah. Um, but I mean, from, from step one and square one, it was always, you know, we, we got to work every single day. We got to, um, you know, figure out what we're doing. If we had extra eggs, you know, my sister and I, we're, we're putting them in a wagon. We're walking two miles down the dirt road to try to sell them to our, uh, um, our neighbor, our closest neighbors. And so I think it also and it contributed a lot to my entrepreneurial um, roots as well growing up. Yeah. Oh, that's so amazing. So I had an uncle growing up that he had a bed and breakfast that was an alpaca farm and he had like 200 alpacas. That's and when I was a kid, he took a picture of me of one of the alpacas, like give me a kiss. And that picture was on his brochure that he gave out to everybody till he passed away. Like he ran the thing for like 45 years and yeah. it was the funniest thing just being there and seeing so many of those alpacas running around but <laughs> there you go you do alpaca poster boy i, yeah, I never got sure. that privilege i wasn't i wasn't good looking enough to make it onto our brochure oh uh, that's awesome <laughs> i mean you're an entrepreneur now which takes a lot of grit and a lot of hustle and i mean you were on the farm there but like were you always kind of having that entrepreneurial mindset or what is it that drives you to be successful today yeah man i i mean i I'm I'm sure there's people that that did you know defy this this pattern, but for me it was like from you know, my earliest memories it was pretty much apparent to me that I, I wanted to you know start my own um, you know company and be an entrepreneur. I think it, it boils down to probably my my uh, you know authority issues. <laughs> I'm just not a I'm not a great employee, so it's <laughs> yeah. more I'm being honest with myself. Um, awesome. But yeah, like I told you, like from the you know, nine years old, it was okay. How can we, you know, how can we sell these eggs? Or once I started getting, you know, working for other people and having jobs in high school, okay, how can I monetize this a little bit on the side? And you know, I was working at a golf course. How can I you know, find golf balls and sell them online? And ended up, you know, expanding throughout the area. So very much from from you know square one, that that was that was the uh, that was the end goal. And, and even going into college, you know, I realized I'd have to work in the industry. Um, I studied you know, computer science and, and business, and I kind of realized, you know, taking a hard look is like, you know, I always know how to program, um, but if I don't know how to sell, then I'll never be able to have a business. And so um, I decided to go into tech sales after school, and it was everything was kind of building iteratively towards um, being able to, to launch a, a business and, you know, a, a software business at that. I love the journey there, man, because I've, I've worked for a lot of startups out there in, you know, a company called Evident IO back in the day when it was around before it got bought out by Palo Alto. I was pretty early on with those guys, but you work for some major companies like Salesforce and Cisco. 
And then when, when you decided to walk away from these big guys and you started, you know, the company dot Cal today, like what's going through your mind? Like what fears did you have? Do you have people telling you don't do that? That's a dumb choice to do. Oh yeah, definitely. I, uh, I had a mother who screamed that. Oh, okay. um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, awesome. I think the scarier thing for me was staying in a company where I knew when I was going to get promoted in two years and I knew this was the next step in my career. And for me, that that was a much scarier outcome than the unknown of of risking and, and going for it. And I, I will say that with like a grain of salt because I think everything along the way is about mitigating your own risk. Like, of course, you know, it's an idyllic thing to say, I want to be my own boss and and, and I'll quit tomorrow. Um, but I, I think it's it's very much about mitigating mitigating your risk. So, you know, for example. I, yeah, I work for some big tech companies. I realized that that bureaucracy is not necessarily, um, you know, an environment that I thrive in. Yeah. And so I, I lasted about a year in New York City after college. I said, I'm out. I, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm just simply not as strong as some of these other people that can do this and get on the L train every day. And so my kind of step function to getting to my dream, which was being an entrepreneur, was joining a true startup. And it sounds like you've done something similar. And I was the first sales hire. And, you know, my stipulation for joining was saying, my first day, I'm going to be in Croatia. I'm going to sell everything I own. I'm going to move it into a suitcase. And yeah, I'm going to work for you wherever I, this is before remote work was kind of cool in, yeah. uh, during the pandemic. And, uh, and so I, I, I did that and I was able to, you know, accomplish a couple of things, travel the world um, while I was young and, and accomplish this big goal for myself um, while still, you know, not, not putting my career on hold and, and building a great sales team in, in a great company that's you know now doing super well. Um, and just again, kind of able to do that as I went. And, uh, I actually traveled, sorry for the long answer here, but I traveled with kind of a, a program that they, uh, they put us up in, in the group of people um, that were kind of like-minded self-selecting. And we were put up in apartments and offices every month in a different country and traveled you know, every month to a different country. Wow. Um, and so again, it was like, all right, I could just, I want to go and travel. I want to do it while I'm, while I'm young, but again, I'm going to mitigate my risk, make sure I can control some of these variables and not fully jump in the deep end, can yeah. still have a career, can still have the structure. And it just kind of led to all these serendipitous, you know, uh, events that now eventually the end goal of, of going into full time as being an entrepreneur. Oh, that's awesome. What was the the favorite location you were at? Uh, that's, that's a good question. Um, I mean, I've, I've been very fortunate to travel to many countries at this point. I mean, in terms of like best place to live, I, I tell everyone Portugal, Lisbon, Portugal is, is, you know, is the, the promised land. Um, but in terms of the most incredible places, it's really the closer you get to the ends of the earth, the more incredible. So mm. um, like Patagonia is so insanely beautiful that I, I actually recommend people don't go because it's, it's so beautiful. It ruins the rest of the earth for you. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's awesome. <laughs> or like Iceland and just anywhere that's, you know, get the extremes end. It's just creates these incredible landscapes that are, you know, really put, put your smallness into perspective. <laughs> yeah. Do you think anyone can be an entrepreneur? So I think anyone can, I think anyone can, can work for themselves and, and be a, you know, solopreneur, freelance, or whatever. Um, I think there's a million opportunities, especially in the day day and age of the internet, where your value is is determined by your skills. And you're we have taken out geographic barriers. We've taken out a lot. You can make it um, as as you know being your own boss. Yeah. I think to be an entrepreneur and start a business, um, like like I said before, I'm, there's definitely many people that have disrupted this pattern. But I think it's like pretty core to your DNA. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, it, it's something that ever since I was a kid, I, I could never turn off my mind. How, what's, what's a different way to think about this problem? What's a different way? And, you know, now I, you know, I, I work on .cal full time, but that's, that doesn't show the graveyard of, of 15 companies and, and side hustles and various things um, that have started in the past. And it's just, it's kind of a part of my brain that it's kind of exhausting. I can't always turn it off, but totally. I think um, people, you know, I'm sure you, you're similar in many ways. Um, it's, it's kind of this, the back of your, your monkey brain that, that never turns off. Yeah, I mean, I think if you kind of have that inkling, then it's it's only inevitable whether you are become an entrepreneur or at least have some kind of side hustle, which you know is always a you know something I recommend. But I have yeah. a question for you. Um, I mean, I always love hearing yeah. you're also you know an entrepreneur yourself. Like, yeah. what, what was your genesis story and how you got into what you're doing now and kind of going full time with what you're doing with the you know, Air you know Media? yeah. I mean, I started pretty young, so I was 10 years old and had a lawn mowing business. So I had about 10 clients at 10 years old, and and uh, did that for two summers. And man, I thought I was like P Diddy back in the day, I mean, yeah. before P Diddy. But like you know, I did, uh, I did it, it's <laughs> literally the the typical 
uh, made up story, but it was not made up for me. I literally had to push a lot more uphill about a mile and a half to get to my furthest client. And then I worked my way back. Um, and so that's what I did when I was 10, 11 years old. It was the greatest thing ever. Uh, but I've always had this entrepreneurial spirit. Like I've always wanted to be my own boss. I still work full time, but I do work for a smaller company right now, which allows me to kind of break away and do these podcast thing. The goal for me is to walk away full time and, and, you know, be a full time entrepreneur in 2023 at some point, I think. Um, but I've uh, been working hard on that, man. You know, uh, I've done a lot of businesses, failed at a lot of businesses, did a lot of, you know, network marketing in the early days, just, you know, get my feet wet on knocking on doors and things like that. And, um, have had some success. I've had some major losses and, and things like that. I mean, I kind of came from the broken home and, uh, I was in jail at 18. I was bankrupt at 21. I mean, battled addictions and, you know, now we're 17 years sober and, you know, changing that story and trying to get few people to realize that, look, your past and other people's opinions don't define your future. And you can decide at any moment that you want to change. And so that was me 17 years ago. And now I've just been on fire to try to make an impact and uh, just got certified as a John Maxwell certified coach and uh, will be a certified speaker through his program as well by the end of this year. And so really excited about that, man. But I mean, the That's journey for me has just incredible. been super fun, nonstop ups and downs. You know, I wake up at 4 a.m. six days a week to work on my stuff before I get to my full-time gig. And, right. you know, uh, but yeah, I got to put in the work, man. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. I, 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 I mean, that's how everyone should get their start is starting it as, as a side hustle. And then yeah. it, it is when you hit a, a, a crossroads where you, you can, you know, um, go full time, but it, it is no, no small effort to, to do that. Yeah, um, so I am absolutely commend it. And, you know, given it sounds like you've, you've lived three lives already, yeah, <laughs> you're true. the type of coach I, I would want. Yeah. <laughs> Not many people I'm like, well, you know, how, how do you have the credibility to speak to this? Well, you've lived like three lives. So yeah, I think you <laughs> very much have that credibility. That's, that's really impressive to hear. I, I love it. Thank you. Yeah. I've been through a little bit ups and downs and a little bit craziness in my life for sure. Um, I, I and I wanted to jump over to Doc Cal because I love this platform. It's super rad. I love the design, the capabilities and things like that. And the other, the C company out there that everybody knows of, it's pretty plain, not customizable at all. Like why did you decide to start this thing and what exactly is DocCal? Yeah. And I mean, we appreciate you being a supporter from, from, you know, our early days. Uh, you were one of our, one of our, you know, earliest aff affiliates and uh, nice. you know, I've been a believer in us, which is, it, that's, you know, really what the lifeblood you need to keep going as a, as an entrepreneur. Um, so yeah, it's, it's kind of an interesting genesis story to the company itself. Um, insofar, it was pretty formulaic. We kind of backed into it. Um, it you know, you generally think of this like inspire, inspirational moment. You have this aha moment. We're like, I, we need to do this. And for us, it, it was it was quite the opposite. So we actually started with the team and then worked backwards to the idea. So um, going back to uh, the the travels I, I had around the world, I met um, my co-founder and CEO uh, in Croatia and then our CTO in Peru. Wow. And so very global and kind of nomadic and, you know, you know, story. And we, you know, fell in love for, for lack of a better term, but like, all right, we want to work together. We, we helped each other with our various businesses. Um, and during the pandemic, we, we kind of came to a crux where we all wanted to, you know, go all, all in on, on a proper, you know, tech startup and go through the Silicon Valley song and dance. And, uh, um, so we, we really sat down for like six months and had, you know, biweekly meetings of, Right. What what do we think makes the most sense to start in this climate? And uh, like I said, it's very formulaic. We kind of backed into what are the tools that add the most value um, in our lives, and uh, and where can the bar be raised? Um, to your point, like there there have definitely a lot of competitors, especially um, a big one. And it's it's really a, I don't think competition is a bad thing. Is one is one thing that totally. you know there's a lot of varying opinions in the entrepreneurial world, but um, it's not a bad thing so long as, you know, you can raise the bar. And so we kind of backed into scheduling as this incredibly valuable tool, but um, really something that's just uninspired, you know, the, the existing, you know, solutions are, are, are bland and uninspired. And for someone that's built businesses and, and put a ton of effort and, and love into building a brand, and then at the most important conversion point, which is getting them on your calendar, it kind of drops into this gray page. And it's it's very baseline as a disservice, but also just kind of rethinking this whole, you know, scheduling and as they become these scheduling links become more commoditized, how do we make this delightful for everyone and build delightful products that ex exceed expectations? Um, so we kind of backed into that as, you know, this is a, a valuable tool where we can raise the bar. And also it's just, a, it's a really um, beautiful business model. If we're talking like a purely just, you know, business look at it it's this flywheel effect of everyone that uses your product 
including free users. We love our free users because they're marketing on your behalf. If they book 20 meetings a month, that's 20 nodes that they actually have to interact with your products, not just like knowing about it, but they actually yeah. have to go through a booking page, see, you know, how good it feels, see the, and, and then, you know, they, they convert, they're doing the work on your behalf. So it's this really powerful flywheel effect. Um, in addition to the fact that just like the, the SEO power you get from having links all over the internet, uh, if you know how to harness that, which Dave, our CEO, he ran a, in a very successful SEO agency. Um, it was another level where we're like, okay, there's enough forces aligning and we think we can, we can add enough to this, um, this space to kind of go on with this, the hypothesis of, of a design first scheduling company, um, and, you know, give people and, and, and companies the, the ability to, to brand and personalize booking pages, you know, however they look. Mm. Um, so yeah, work around a uh, long answer there, but that's kind of how we backed into this, uh, this space. And, you know, it's, it's been a quite, quite the roller coaster ride so far. I love it, man. I mean, I know that you guys are still building out features there, but what do you have rolling out that you can share and, and what excites you the most about kind of this platform? Yeah. So I'm super excited to share about shared. Um, it's releasing, uh, two, Thursday. So in two days, Sorry. um, uh, we also sent some of the features that, that you request in terms of email reminders, all those things that we'll be releasing at the end of the month. Um, nice. But shared booking pages is basically this concept and, and really the, the second you know, iteration of, of DocCal and, and scheduling in its entirety. Um, so obviously, you know, what, what we have works great for these kind of one-on-one -on -one use cases, you know, setting up this podcast, you have, you sent me your DocCal link and I, I, I was able to, you know, schedule time immediately without going back and forth. That's great. But in the reality, the majority of meetings um, are not just one-on-ones. There's going to be other people included. And so having a really simple way to aggregate calendars um, for whatever the use case is, um, is something that's really important to us. And it's taken a lot of work to kind of structure that from the ground up. But let's say, you know, I need to get on a call, let's say when I was in, in sales at, at, at Salesforce, for example, um, I would get on a call with my sales engineer and it was never, you know, um, one or the other, he needed to be included. So, um, so this shared booking page in, you know, one click, I can invite whoever it is, um, whether they're in my company or elsewhere, it could be, um, you know, a client. And, uh, and so it, it aggregates all of your times. So that way, um, either externally can still be booked. So whenever a customer needs to meet with both of us, um, they can book that, but also um, it's maybe internally. So I, I now have shared booking pages with all my friends that I catch up with uh, on a monthly basis. And instead of having to, you know, go back and forth at all, we both have this shared booking page that we it automatically knows all our times. We click a time and, and we're good to go. Um, and and it, it spans to you know, a million use cases. And it's, you know, it's not limited to if you're on a team or you're paid, even free users that you can invite your, your mother-in-law um, for when you, you know, you want to go for a walk in the park. Um, and so, yeah, it's just, I, you know, we're already seeing in our beta, um, the, the companies that are using this is leading to a lot of really interesting use cases. And it's something we're, we're super excited about and just the next version of making scheduling, you know, headaches really a thing of the past, um, is being able to have uh, pages for all these use cases. Uh, I think it's so important, especially when, you know, I work in customer success. So if I need to get on a phone call with a client, I got to get a hold of my customer merchandise person. And then maybe sometimes my manager and I'm like, Hey, pick out a time, but Oh, here's three times that I had to manually go do battleship, you know, calendar battleship with. Right. And so I think it's so good when you can <laughs> share one link that just ties into everybody's calendar, they can just pick it out. That makes it so much easier as, a, as someone who's in customer success or even as an entrepreneur for sure. Yeah, no, exactly. That's a, that's a perfect use case for it. And yeah, you got your like your VIP customers, the ones that you meet with a lot, just have a standing, it's, it's like a, just your team, but you could also have one where you actually invite them as well. And yeah. so that way, you know, whenever they need support, um, you want to be available to them. Um, they can one click, you know, have access to you and, and your team. So yeah, that's, that's kind of the, the idea. Oh, that's awesome. I'm big on morning routines. Like I mentioned, I get up at 4 a.m. six days a week and uh, really have that first 45 minutes to an hour of just me time growing in my personal development and spending time for me. Personally, it's, it's prayer time and being able to just be great, have gratitude about my day and things that I'm blessed with. Um, but for you, what's that morning routine look like? Not as uh, rigid as yours. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's a little bit extreme sometimes, but. <laughs> yeah, no, because I wake up at 3 a.m. Um, okay. and, and I already have two hours. So nice. <laughs> time before you're up. Um, no, 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 very much not the case. Um, yeah, you know, I think everyone operates on their own, their own cycles. And so, yeah. um, for example, I, I am, I am a, a, a very much a night person. And so from like 9 p.m. to 1 a.m., I that's when I'm uninterrupted. I don't have emails going in. 
I'm able to, I, I'm able to code, I'm able to get all these things done. And like, that's when my mind is operating on, on its highest kind of frequency in the mornings. It's more of a, a slower approach. It's less, um, you know, work related and more just Ryland related. Um, and yeah. so what that, what that entails is, um, you know, pretty much it's, it's coffee. I read every time I, uh, you know, whenever I'm drinking coffee, I have to be reading. That's like, it's, it's not that long. I, I chug coffee, but like those, you know, 10 minutes a day are, are structured around learning and no matter what you should always be learning yeah uh, and then uh and then yeah you know walking the dog and taking a shower like just take it slow rolling it for the first hour hour and a half yep. because once i'm in work mode my yeah my, my mind is buzzing um <laughs> so kind of giving yourself a, a built-in break um but yep. before that starts is something i do but um, I, I could, I could take a lesson or two from you because it's, it's certainly not a, not a 4am. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's, I mean, and, and morning routines can happen anytime. Like, I mean, you, I'm not a night person. So certainly at like usually nine 30 at night, I'm out cold. Like, you know, I'm definitely not a night person anymore where I think, like you said, nine to 1am, that seems to be like the magic hour for you. And I, and I think that that's when your morning routine like kicks in, right. So to speak. Right. right. Uh, but, uh, I think that's awesome that you can have that and, and uh, yeah, people are like, well, why do you wake up before him? It's like, well, for me, my desire to be successful is bigger than my desire to sleep. So I just want to make that happen and put that through and I can get my personal development stuff done in the morning there. Right. Um, yeah, sleep when we're dead. And one thing yeah. I'll say is that um, uh, the thing I've really appreciated how we've built DotCal and then um, in particular because of the, you know, my co-founders and how global we were in our, in our genesis and in how we continue to be is yeah. that our employees are, are all around the world. So we, they're in, you know, Ukraine and Philippines and Australia. And it, it's created this completely global team where it, it, there's no like structured work hours. Like you have to be sitting at your desk at this time. It's work when you are your best. Yes. Um, because when you're at your peak, you do more in three hours than you do in eight hours of, of mediocrity. Um, and so whatever the time of the day that is, that is um, we've just built a, a company culture around working asynchronously and really effectively. And, uh, and, and you know, I think for all the bad things that, that the pandemic brought, um, it brought some, you know, positive externalities in terms of like making our, our lives more efficient. If you can work remote and you can work when you're your best, we don't need to all pretend that, you know, we all work the exact same amount every single week. Um, and it's, uh, it's something that is like core to our DNA and, that, um, and, and by giving everyone that ownership, you know, they, we've, uh, they get their stuff done and, 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 and you know, I think that's, that's something that I, I hope the, the whole world continues to shift towards. Man, absolutely. Absolutely. I love to finish the show with a fun question. I'm a big music guy. So I've asked the question, like, what's a favorite band for you or what type of music do you like to listen to? Okay. Um, so I think my favorite band is probably Vampire Weekend. Um, okay. Nice. Be familiar. Yeah. I, I think they can do no wrong. And every song they release is, is musical perfection. Um, yes. But yeah, I mean, I, I'm a big, uh, um, uh, what's the word? Musician myself. Wow. Okay. Um, Clearly, I'm not that big a musician. I don't even know the word. Um, <laughs> so I, I love in the in the thread of always continuing to learn. You know, I uh, I kind of relapse every every few months, and I'll, I'll buy a new instrument and and like just you know obsess over that instrument for for a month and and learn it. Um, awesome. And I think it's just a really interesting way to, to keep your brain stimulated. So I always I think music is is if you're inclined to that, it's just such a um, good way to keep your mind um, you know alive and stimulated and, and whether that's making it or or, or listening to it. Yes. Um, but yeah, Vampire Weekend is my uh, my go to. What about you? Uh, you know, for me, uh, I've been really into a band called Brain City Drive right now. Um, but uh, I, you know, I used to be a straight metalhead guy, and then I worked for Universal Records for a year in my early twenties, which was an awesome uh, experience to be part of them. And I was just doing marketing and, and managing their mail room for a bit, but. Um, it opened my eyes where they said, no, you got to listen to these other music types of music. So I was listening to that, you know, rap and hip hop and country music, even then at that point, you know, and, and uh, so I'm kind of all over the place, but I still go back to my, my rock roots. My favorite band of all time is actually the cars. Uh, so I, I love the cars, man. But uh, yeah, so that's kind of my, my genre that I stick with is, is more rock. You, and... you had to go from metalhead to, to rain city drive. I did. Yes. Yeah. I lost the beard. So <laughs> <laughs> that, had the beard for uh, about six years and then it was my wife and i's 17 year anniversary and came home and surprised her with it gone and just clean shaven and she's like oh my gosh you know so thought i just mixed it up a little bit so beard rebrand well Riley, it's such an honor to have you on my show and i'm super honored to be able to work with dot cal and promote what you guys got going on i love your guys's platform and i'm excited for what's rolling out and man, you guys are going to come out and just make a huge impact on the world, man. You're an absolute world changer. Thank you, Rylan, for your time today, man. I appreciate it. 
Thank you. I appreciate it. And I appreciate all your audience as well. We'd love, love to have them on board. I think it's, it's great for folks like, you know, that listen to you, they're thinking about entrepreneurship, their own brands. I think it's the exact type of people I, I love working with and seeing the, you know, the kind of booking pages they create. So we appreciate yeah. the opportunity and yeah, excited to follow your journey here. Hey, thank you so much for checking out the show today. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to take a listen or a watch. It's truly an honor to be able to speak with such amazing guests. And I hope that they've made an impact on your life in some way, shape, or form. And you can do me one big favor. That would be huge. Click that subscribe button. And then second favor, hit that share button. Thank you so much for taking the time. I appreciate you. Keep changing the world. I believe in you.